video, I will demonstrate the functions of the Click Clusters tab and the Click Keywords tab. You can find them on the right hand side in the menu bar as with all the features in Click. Let's start with the Clusters tab. This feature allows you to create a list of words or a list of repeated sequences of words in a particular text or in a set of texts. In Corpus Linguistics, repeated sequences of words are also known as clusters. So when we click on the clusters tab, as some settings appear, for now the screen on the left is blank because we haven't selected data or run any analysis yet, but this is where the results will be shown. So to select the data, we go to search the corpora and we click into the text box. This opens a drop down menu and the five main click corpora are shown at the top of this list. Each of these contain a collection of texts. Further down the list, you will see that there are the individual titles of the texts within these corpora if you want to pick and mix individual texts. Rather than scroll down all the way, you can actually just start typing a title in the box and it will suggest matches. But for this example, let's go with Dickens's novel. So we'll select that. And an important choice in the clusters tab is the Ngram drop-down menu here. This lets you choose whether you want to create your list for single words, which would be the one gram option, or for clusters of several words in length, which would be any of the others. But let's try out the one gram option first. Now, before anything happens, we need to tell Click whether we want to analyze the entire text of the corpus or if we just want to look at a subset of the text. We do this in the subset menu. Let's go with all text first, and then we can come back to the subsets in a moment. So now that we've selected all the options, we get some results on the left, and the table shows the most frequent single words, or one grams, in Dickens's novels. These results are quite typical for English texts, with many grammatical words at the top of the list, and these are quite common words, like the determinant the, conjunctions like and, and so forth. Content words only come further down the list, so if we scroll down, we can go to the second page, and here we do find some content words, for example, good. But other than that, the list itself is quite a typical reflection of word lists in general. Now, clusters, so repeated sequences of several words, actually tend to be a bit more content focused, especially when we look at the longer ones. So let's go up in length. So let's say we go to our Ngram menu and we choose five gram, which will get, give us a five word cluster. So with this length, we get a better sense of the content and we can even start to think about what function these clusters have in the novels. For that, you can then choose a particular cluster, click on it, and that will take you to a concordance, which opens in another tab. And here you get an overview of all the instances of that cluster in the different novels. And we can tell you more about concordance analysis in another video, but this is where you can start to look at context and interpret. So going back to our clusters, we um, can have a look at the options again. So earlier we said that Click has some interesting subset options. These all have to do with fictional speech and narration. So a really useful subset is the quote subset. 
it contains all the parts of the text that are found inside quote marks and the 19th century fiction the text inside quote marks mostly corresponds to fictional speech so if we choose quotes for this corpus we can obtain the clusters for fictional speech by Dickens's characters. So you can see the results here, and they are quite different from the list we just had for all text. So we now get a lot of first person and second person pronouns. We've got I, we've got you, we've got some questions like what do you mean by, what do you think of? And some clusters also seem to express politeness, so very much obliged to you. Uh, we've got some other clusters that seem to express some sort of um, vagueness as well. We've got the example, all that sort of thing here. So this is again something you can then explore in more detail looking at concordances, looking at the context. But by contrast to these results, let's have a look at non-quotes. So if we go back to the subset option, we go to non-quotes and if we scroll back to the top, um, this looks a little bit similar to the all text view because the text outside of quote marks, the non-quotes, they actually make up a larger proportion of Dickinson's novels than the quotes. So that's why they are a bit overrepresented in all text. But compared to the quote marks, we see a stark contrast. Um, the non-quotes relate to narration. So there's body language with hands in his pockets. We've got references to time and we've got references to to space, for example, up and down the room, um, at the top of the, and, and so on and so forth. So again, you can explore this in your own time. If you want to make a systematic comparison between quotes and non-quotes, you can use the Keywords tab. So let's have a look at the Keywords. This will open another menu. Keywords are words that are significantly more frequent in one corpus or text compared to another corpus, the reference corpus. Click uses the lock likelihood test and there is some more information about this in the user guide, which is available from the help menu at the top right. Dickens's novel should still be selected here. We start with traditional keywords, so single words, so we can leave the option at one gram. And let's see which words are more frequent in fictional speech compared to non-quotes in Dickens' novels. So we choose quotes for our target corpus. And then we go to the reference corpus. Um, and as we want to compare speech and narration within Dickens' novels, we choose that same corpus again, but with a different subset. Now selecting the non-quotes. So this might take a, a little moment because we are comparing 15 books, but here we are. These are kind of the results that we'd expect from having that previous look at the clusters. So that's great. We've got the first and second person pronouns again, and they point to some interaction in the dialogue. We also have contractions. So um, that's when a word is shortened, as is the case with this don't here. So that's a little more informal than the full forms, which may be used more in narration. If you want to get the other perspective, so the keywords, in non-quotes, you can actually use this handy swap button to turn the corpora around to then see which words are more salient in narration compared to fictional speech. So what keywords do we get in the non-quotes? 
quite strikingly. We've got some more third person here, but what's interesting is we also have a lot of reporting verbs here. Replied, returned. inquired for example so this is an example where these are words that are not usually used or not frequently used in fictional speech and and there's lots more you could explore here so let's swap back for now the reason that we're combining the clusters and the keywords tab in this video is that in Click you can also make use of the clusters in the keywords tab. You might have already recognized that this menu looks a little bit similar. So if you go to Ngrams, um, we can choose a length over one. Let's go with five again because we, we know that already. And this will now create key clusters rather than key words and we'll get a list of clusters that are significantly more frequent in the quotes compared to the non-quotes. You can see the evidence here in the table. What do you mean by is very frequent in the quote subset with 68 instances and it does not occur at all in the reference corpus which is of course the non-quotes in this case. Sometimes there are one or two or a handful of cases in the non-quotes in the reference corpus but for all the clusters listed here there's a significant difference so they're all comparatively more frequent in the quotes. Finally, I would like to demonstrate another use of the keywords tab. We don't have to rely on differences between quotes and non-quotes. That's something that's quite specific to click in our research. In fact, more commonly perhaps, keywords are used to look at words that are salient in a particular fictional text compared to a reference corpus. For that, Let's first reset the search. We can do that by clicking clear at the top. Now we can make a new selection. Let's take the example of a Christmas carol. So I'll start typing that. Let's select it. It is not part of the corpus of Dickens's novels. It's part of the Click Arts corpus of additionally requested texts. And because it's not part of Dickens's novels, we could choose Dickens's novels as a reference corpus to compare to. Now we're interested in the text as a whole, so we choose all text for both cases. And we'll leave it at one gram to look at keywords. So we've got our results here, and if you know the story, these look very, very familiar. We've got character names and um, Christmas ghost referring to the various ghosts that he meets, other character names and so on. So the choice of the reference corpus will depend on your purpose. If we're interested in seeing how a Christmas carol might differ from Dickens's novels, we could we could choose Dickens's novels here as we've done. Um, but alternately, alternatively, you could move away from Dickens and choose a more general corpus. So we can remove this and choose, for example, the 19th century reference corpus. This is a more general corpus. It contains texts by a range of British authors other than Dickens of the 19th century and we get slightly different results. And that would have an effect on how you can describe your results and interpret them, what it means that certain words are salient. And for this analysis, 
as uh, in the clusters tab you could again click on a particular word and it will open a concordance line that you can then analyze in context and even also look at the actual text in the chapter of the book. So let's go back to the keywords table. You will have seen there are some other columns over here. The column on the far right is the p-value threshold. This corresponds to the cutoff setting in the menu bar, the p-value cutoff. This option has to do with a statistical test for the comparison. So the default is actually set at the lowest level that we have. And using this cutoff essentially means we're being a little bit careful. We're cutting off the list more strictly than with the other thresholds. So if you go up with a p-value, um, let's say to 0 0.5, the list will get longer. So we've got um, at the moment 106 entries. If we go to 0 0.05, we're going up in a moment, it's still calculating. We're going up to 248. So we've now got a longer list to analyze, um, but as it's longer and the p-value some of them are included that are only at the p-value cutoff of 0 0.05. It now also includes words where we can't be completely sure whether they're really key. So we would generally recommend sticking to the lowest level, um, which gives you a little bit more security. Hopefully this video gave you a good idea of the clusters and keywords tabs. And we hope you'll get in touch if you have any questions or to share your results. We really love hearing from you. Thank you very much.